Hello and welcome back to Online English Class AP English Language Students. I hope you guys are uh, doing excellently well today. Uh, today is Tuesday, April 7th, and today we're going to be discussing the content of Lecture 2, which is titled How to Engage a Source Effectively. All right, so um, before we get into the content of that lecture, which is not going to take a long time, it's going to be a short class period today, uh, let's just talk quickly about the top of the week announcements to remind you where we've been and where we are going. Yesterday we discussed the changes to the AP English Language curriculum uh, that were announced by the College Board. Uh, basically, the Spark Notes there is that we are going to be taking a one-question, 45-minute exam that is going to require you to answer a free response prompt that uh, that is based on rhetorical analysis. All right, so for the next few months, up until May 20th, we're going to be working on uh, those prompts together on a weekly basis in our progress checks. So our progress checks are pivoting away from multiple choice and toward um, uh, free response questions, okay? So, uh, yesterday we talked about the content of lecture one, which identified what synthesis is, why we do it, and a little bit of like, uh, a little bit about how we do that. All right, today we're going to be expanding our understanding of how to engage in the synthetic process by looking at how to engage with sources effectively, okay? Uh, what, what, what it means to uh, engage with a source effectively and efficiently in the research process. Tomorrow we're going to begin OTN1. All right, uh, and then we're uh, to, by the end of today, you need to finish your U unit five progress check, um, and go ahead and begin your unit six progress check uh, about the free response questions um, uh, that are related to rhetorical analysis uh, from here on out. Okay, so make sure you're getting those progress checks done. Make sure you send me an email confirming your completion of OTNs eight and nine by Thursday. Let your work on Ellison Durant Smith and Robert H Clancy. Uh, make sure that you read Chapter 4, Synthesizing Sources, by next Monday. Uh, you do not have to read the section uh, that is devoted to education, the civil rights issue of our time. Uh, and entitled that, you don't have to read those sources. We're going to be doing our own synthetic uh, analysis of a ser of multiple series of sources, uh, so you don't need to read those. Uh, and then just begin OTN1 whenever we begin OTN1 on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Okay. Uh, the ongoing assignment that you have uh, in front of you all throughout the course of the next month and a half is your quarter four essay. We discussed that prompt yesterday, uh, and today I just I, I just want to remind you it's it, it is never too early to begin the process of figuring out exactly what you're going to write that paper about. Because if you want to write a good one, uh, there is some legwork that needs to be done. You do this is a this is a difficult assignment even if it's been streamlined, okay? Uh, and so it's it's wise to go ahead and begin. Now, all right, so let's go ahead and review the content of uh, Lecture 1 uh, and then jump into Lecture 2. Uh, it's not going to take a long time. Uh, it's probably going to be uh, inside of about 10 minutes. So uh, let's, let's just make sure that we are intentionally focusing on this information, which is relatively simple and straightforward, but very vital. Okay, right? It's like, uh, you know, simple and straightforward, but vital uh, information, all right? So, uh, what is synthesis? It's just using outside resources in argumentation uh, as springboards, okay? Uh, why? Ethos and logos, primarily. How? All right, well, first, you have to select a contentious topic that's relevant and timely. Second, you need to begin to listen to the existing voices in the conversation. How do you do that? Well, first, by understanding the context and background of your issue. And second, by reading and analyzing the voices that offer specific arguments or relevant information about your uh, issue. We're going to be talking about this more today. Third, by taking research notes, making sure that you have that you're anal analyzing those those resources on, a, on on the record, on a record, making a record of it. Finally, uh, develop a claim and then support the claim. All right. So uh, it's a little more expanded version of what we talked about yesterday. It's the same slide, uh, but and it's the same basic information. Uh, but but that's that's how we do it. All right. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about how to engage a source effectively during uh, the the process of listening. How to listen well to our sources. Okay. Well, first of all, uh, you need a procedure. You you need a plan. All right. Just scrolling aimlessly through Google. Uh, is not a very effective research strategy, all right? The first thing that you want to do before you even read your sources, all right, is the step one of the plan is develop a central question that is related to the contentious topic 
that you've selected. All right, it's it's wise to develop what's called a research question. All right, and what a research question does is it basically just uh, asks a question that your thesis will answer. Okay, so turn your contentious topic into a question and then begin to read and research documents that are related to that question answering in your mind and in your notes how that document is related to that question. Okay, That's at its core all you need to do. That's at its core what synthesis is. All right, Reading documents and answering mentally in your head how those documents relate directly to the contentious topic that you've selected. Okay? So, for example, let's say I got really into the Colin Kaepernick issue back in Unit 5, and I want to write my essay evaluating whether or not Kaepernick's protest aligns with American values, okay, American virtues, uh, whether or not it's patriotic, all right? So that evaluatory question, that's my central claim, all right? So uh, the distinct, that distinguishes it, it, itself from something like, right, uh, what were the results or consequences of Kaepernick's protest, all right? Well, that's, that's, that's a claim of fact, all right, that will require you to, to research what happened, what the actual effects or consequences of, that, uh, of his action was. All right? That's a little bit different than evaluating whether or not the act itself aligned with American values and virtues. Okay? So if that's our central claim, now we need to begin the process of reading, of listening. Okay? And the first thing that we should do when we engage a source all right, is evaluate the rhetorical situation. Understand what the situation of that text is, what kind of text it is. All right, that's going to help you understand how it's related to your research question and the extent to which the document is credible or should be taken seriously. Okay. Next element. If it's an argument specifically, you need to analyze the line of reasoning of that source, looking specifically at the claim that it makes, the evidence that it offers, and the assumptions with which it ties together that pro the, 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 the evidence and the claim. Okay, uh, Because, all right, if it supports your central claim, then you can, use, uh, you can use the reasoning of that document to support your own line of reasoning. But if it refutes your claim, then it's, it's going to raise an issue, and if the argument is cogent, it's going to raise a cogent issue that you need to deconstruct in order for your opinion to be valid. Right? Does that make sense? If there are cogent, logical arguments out there that refute your position, then you need to deal with them in order for your position to be persuasive. All right? Then you need to record these observations in your notes, and they can be informal, and they can be short, and they can be concise, but, but you need to have some kind of record of these things. And then after you read, right, you have to answer a very important question mentally. How does this information relate to the prompt, which you assign to yourself, right? How does it relate to my central question, my contentious topic, right? Let me offer you an example. That's it, okay? This, that, that's all the information for the day. I told you it was going to be quick. It, it's not rocket science. It's not complicated. But obviously, it takes legwork. It takes dedication. In order to do the things that I've listed here, it takes, uh, it, it, it takes work and time, all right? So let me give you a quick example, all right, going back to this Kaepernick issue. Right? So if my central question of, of, of my essay is uh, an evaluatory question that evaluates whether or not uh, Kaepernick's protest aligns with American values and virtues, okay? Let me show you two sources that I came across during my uh, research process, okay? So I hop on Google, I start the process of reading and vetting various resources, and uh, I get taken to this one, all right? This is the first one that I get taken to from SB Nation, uh, which is a sports blog, all right, owned by Vox.com. So this is like a legit uh, uh, sports uh, news resource. These guys are like professionals and they get paid like a salary, okay? They have press cred credentials and they're like legit uh, journalists, all right? So uh, 
seems like a pretty non-biased, seems like a pretty uh, reliable resource here. Uh, it's not necessarily developing an argument about Kaepernick's um, uh, journey. It's just simply giving me a timeline. It's giving me a history of Kaepernick's journey from football stardom uh, to NFL exile. All right. So um, when I get into this resource, okay, what all, all I have here is just a series of events in a timeline for me and also a timeline of comments made about Kaepernick and Kaepernick's protest as right uh, his protest has developed. Now, that's pretty interesting. Okay, that's pretty interesting because what this is going to do as a whole, this resource is going to answer one very simple question for me. All right, that's related to my research question. What happened? Uh, what was uh, uh, Kaepernick's protest about, and how did it unfold? This is just a historical. Uh, this is a historical resource. It's just going to give me a kind of brief history uh, of of what happened during the the issue. Now, is that directly related to me answering the question? Is Kaepernick's protest patriotic? No. All right, but it is going to help me uh, understand something important for my uh, essay, what Kaepernick's protest was. What was it about? How did people talk about it? How did people react to it? How did his team react to it? Okay, All of these things are relevant on background for the issue. Okay, So this is my first, uh, this is my first uh, piece, right? Is this, is this helpful? Yeah. What kind of resource is it? Background. Is it reliable? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, over here, after a little more digging, I, I found an actual opinion piece about Colin Kaepernick's protest uh, published in The Guardian, which is a uh, British-based, um, this is obviously a U.S. edition of a British-based paper, uh, very similar like The New York Times uh, or uh, The Washington Post, just a national news source. Uh, it's a world news source ultimately, okay? And uh, it offers an opinion piece uh, that argues that Colin Kaepernick's protest might be unpatriotic and that's just fine. Okay, so this is obviously a positive take on the value of his protest. Uh, uh, the writer, Smith, uh, qualifies a little bit. His protest does not need to be recast as patriotic because patriotism is not a higher virtue than justice. Okay, so if, if uh, by the end of my research process, I, I choose to argue that Kaepernick's protest is valuable, it's good, it it's, it's, uh, pursues uh, things that align with American uh, values and humane values, then I could use this resource that obviously also paints Kaepernick's protest in a positive light. <laughs> it's not very hard to understand or see that. Okay, uh, I could use this to help solidify and support my line of reasoning. Okay, I could borrow some points. I could borrow some evidence. I could borrow uh, some claims uh, from Smith. Okay. Now, if I decide to, to take Kaepernick uh, in a more ne negative light, then I might need to deconstruct Smith's line of reasoning. Okay. So, two different kinds of resources. One on background, all right, one directly related to answering my question. Both relevant, but relevant in different ways. All right. So, your job as the researcher is to, correct, uh, is to collect an appropriate, not just any four, but the, the four. The perfect four or five or six or seven or eight resources that support your claim in the best possible way. Okay? That's up to your judgment. That's part of what's being evaluated in the synthetic argument how you use the documents and what documents that you use. All right. Hope you guys have an excellent day.